Hey all, Tony Bing here. Hello and welcome back to another in-depth review for Marvel Strike Force. Now, today we'll have a look at a Sinister Six character, a really nice character at that. It will be Vulture now in the video to let you know if he's worth unlocking various different sections we cover. We'll start off with the general overview. We'll then check out the stats. We'll have a look at the abilities. Next up, it's the synergies, which is characters he works well with and characters you want to avoid. And then finally, we'll see where he places in the tier list. So we'll start off with the general overview. Vulture then is a brawler class, but like so many characters that came to the game recently, he can be a hybrid of a separate class as well, and that would be a controller. He has various controller aspects as part of his kit. Now, when we look at the tags, it's Villain, City, Tech, Brawler, Spider-Verse and Sinister Six. The interesting ones at the moment are Spider-Verse and Sinister Six, and the Tech tag is a really strong one as well. Now, in regards to unlocking him, there was quite a few mess-ups with his offer that was released in the game. And for that reason they brought it back where you could buy him at $1.99 so hopefully you jumped on that because he's definitely worth that, I can say that much. So let's now have a look at his stats. We start off here with the offensive stats. The damage is down at a D rating which is low for a brawler but there are other aspects of his kit which can help make up for this. His speed is up at 127 which is an A so that is exceptionally fast. I think he's in the top 5 in the game speed wise if we don't count passives and characters that are able to, to bypass speed such as the, the full brotherhood team and so on. His focus is up at a B that is important because as part of his kit he does have debuffs that he will be applying and those debuffs can make a real big difference depending on the team he's going up against. But that's the offensive stats, let's now have a look at the defensive ones. Defensive stat wise then he does struggle but that is to be expected for a brawler class, generally you'll need a protector to actually keep them up. So his health is down at an E, his armour is a C and his resistance is E as well. So with the resistance he will be susceptible to debuffs, that's something you need to look out for or it's something you could take advantage of if you're going up against them. So with the stats covered, let's have a look at the abilities. First ability we look at here is the passive, so this one is called Scavenger now, maxed out at rank 5. On spawn you fill speed bar by 10%, you fill 10% speed bar per city hero enemy, especially good if you go up against the defenders. On ally death you gain deflect, on enemy death you change speed bar by 25% which is really a decent amount and you gain plus 10% block chance for each city hero enemy, so there could be up to five of them in a regular match, meaning an additional 50% block chance. Now this is a really nice passive, this one. You will want to max it out, because if you only take it to level four, you don't get the guaranteed deflect on enemy death, and your speed bar only increases by 10% rather than 25%, and also the block chance won't be as high either. So definitely save up your tier four materials for this one. For the basic we have a skill called lift off, maxed out this one you would attack primary target for 250% damage and you gain an additional 40% damage per negative effect so depending on the, the team you're running with if it's one that applies a lot of debuffs you can do a heap of damage with this. Now the difference from 6 to 7 is 40% damage on the initial attack and 10% Pair additional debuff which is nice but with all the other characters in the game that require tier 4 materials this is one I would say you would just want to take to level 6. Next ability is the special, this is available turn number 1, so this is fight and flight. With this, maxed out you attack primary and all adjacent targets for 300% damage and apply slow, and if target is a city hero you apply a fence down for 2 turns, so you'll be looking to apply that fence down to the likes of Punisher or Daredevil, but you just need to bear in mind if Punisher and Daredevil are in the same team and you hit Daredevil first then you will get a retaliation from Punisher, so just do be wary of that. Now in regards to do you want to max this out, it's a difference of 60% damage and it's the primary and adjacent targets. The slow isn't guaranteed at level 6 and the offence down is only for 1 to 2 turns at level 6 as well so this is definitely a, a skill that you want to max out so take this one all the way up to level 7. 
Final ability we have here is supersonic. This is the ultimate, so it's six turns to charge and it comes with four charges. That means you can use it turn number two. So with this, you attack all enemies for 320% damage and you change speed burn all of them by 25%, which is pretty awesome as well. Now, the difference from six to seven is 5% on the speed bar reduction and 60% on the damage. Now, because it attacks all characters, this is another one that I would say you want to max out. So you've got quite a few that you'll be maxing out on Vulture. Now, with the abilities covered, let's have a look at the synergies. When it comes to characters that Vulture can work well with, the first and most obvious choice would be the Sinister Six characters. You also have the Spider-Verse characters because there's quite a lot of synergy between their tags. Now, due to his basic and the additional damage you can do on enemies that have debuffs, the Brotherhood can actually work pretty nice. He can slot into that team as a fifth member. And then finally, due to the tech tag, you could pair him up with Vision and he'll get that two turns of defence up at the start of the fight. And that will keep him in there until you can actually fire off that ultimate skill and just wreck that other team. So that's the characters he works well with. Let's now have a look at the characters you want to avoid. When it comes to characters you want to avoid, firstly, probably the, the biggest threat to him would be Captain Marvel because she's actually faster than him and via her ultimate there's a good chance that she would actually take him down because he is pretty squishy. Now, next up you would have Mordo and Star-Lord. They would go after he's had his first turn, but that means they have the option of actually blinding him so that ultimate will miss because it's not unavoidable, so it is really nice if you can get him to waste the ultimate. You then have the likes of Ant-Man, Vision and Star-Lord, they all have ability block and they can cast it again after he's had his first turn and it means his ultimate is delayed for another turn and then you've got a chance to take him down before he actually casts it there. So that's the enemies you want to avoid or, or actual characters you can use if you're going up against them to take him down. So for the final section we'll check out and see where he sits in the tier list. Vulture then is a really interesting character because recently we've seen a lot of characters that are brought out and they're, they're very strongly tied into a specific team. Now yes, Vulture is tied into the Sinister Six and Spider-Verse to an extent through their characters, but he can actually fit into and, and really work well in a variety of other teams. And this is the type of character I like to see added to the game. One where we're not told specifically by Fox Nicks use this X character on X team, but one where we can actually play around and experiment and see where they would fit. Now, due to that flexibility he has, I would say that on his own, he would sit as a mid-alpha character through synergies, and that would specifically be with the Sinister Six and the Spider-Verse characters, then he would move up one slot to a high alpha character. So, once again, when the offer was available where you could get 50 of his shards for $1.99, you could actually purchase it two times. I really do hope you did buy that pack, because without a doubt, it was definitely worth Worth that, worth that and more actually. So as always I hope this particular video has been useful. Now in previous videos I've mentioned the fact that YouTube for some reason, I have no idea why, but it's really low at recommending my content. I've spoke to other content creators for the game and they get around about 30% of their views from recommended content for myself. It's went as low as 9% recently which is really odd again, don't know why it's happening. but. On the back of that, if you are enjoying the videos that I put up on the channel, take the time to hit the like button, hit the share button, then we don't have to rely on YouTube to share the content. Leave a comment because that helps drive engagement as well. And if you're subscribed and you've not yet hit the notification button, make sure to hit that because although you may be subscribed to the channel, doesn't necessarily mean that YouTube will actually notify you when I do upload any new content. But as always, really, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you all again soon.